as an narcolepsy researcher, I've always been fascinated by the hypothalamus, of course, because the cause of narcolepsy is in hypothalamus, we think. Uh, and now the last years I'm also involved in clinical care for a lot of cluster headache patients. Um, and it's very interesting that there's a, a relationship between their severe headache attacks, really severe headache attacks, and sleep. Uh, the attacks often occur in sleep, after falling asleep, after being asleep for 90 minutes, 90 minutes. There is a story that maybe their attacks have some link with REM sleep, but that's never been proven yet. So there's a circadian aspect in the attacks uh, when, when they occur. Uh, also, when people fall asleep during the day, it can elicit an attack. Some people are even afraid to sleep, act, uh, actively postpone sleep and to not have an attack. Um, uh, so, there's at least a, uh, some, a link between cluster headache attacks and the clock, because uh, the, uh, the attacks occur at certain clock times, but also related to sleep. Uh, this topic has not been solved yet. Uh, many uh, patients with cluster headache really have uh, a lot of sleep problems. If you assess this using questionnaires, um, and also polysomnography has been performed, but uh, they mainly complain about uh, yeah, insomnia, but also other sleep problems. So I think a clinician should be aware that there are a lot of, there can be a lot of sleep problems in the cluster headache patient, and at least ask them if this is the case, and maybe it can be of help to uh, pay attention to this or refer them to a sleep clinician if, if needed. Um, but at this time point, it's not really uh, proven that you can really directly influence sleep to directly influence cluster headache. But that's uh, an interesting topic for the future. Yeah.